Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 920. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video, we just want to go back and look at Excel Magic Trick 917 and 918 and see some cool different formulas for accomplishing those tasks. Now, in 917, we did a rotating list. Here's our original data set, and here's a formula that rotates through the list. What do we do? We type any number here. It Fine. starts at the fifth position. Frank into Will, and then goes back to the top and lists them. Now, in that video, we used index, which is a lookup function. And this was our row number, right? So here, we can clearly see the numbers. The row number of the item we want to extract is listed here. And we did it with this formula. So in this video, we want to see a different way of incrementing the numbers 3 down to 9, and then 1 to 2. This cool formula and trick comes from straight to video 503 at YouTube. Now, again, we're going to create, for, if we're starting at 3, we need 3 to 8, and then 1 to 2. We're going to start by using the, clicking in the right cell and the type in the rows function. Now, the rows functions will tell you how many rows there are in a range. So I'm going to type C dollar sign 15, because I'm sitting in cell C15, colon C15. This dollar locked here, but not, means expandable range. So as I copy it down, it'll give me the numbers 1 to 9. Now, that's not what I want. From that, I'm going to add the starting position. Now, that seems kind of weird. I'm going to actually hit the F4 key. 1 plus 3, that'll give me 4. Well, that's not right at all. Double click and send it down. But watch this. We're going to subtract 2. Control Enter and double click and send it down. Now, this weird little construction uh, here doesn't seem at all like it would work. But let's think about it. What if we, what's 2 divided by 9? Well, it's 0 with a remainder 2. What's 8 divided by 9? It's 0 remainder 8. Similarly, 9 divided by 9, well, it's remainder 0. And here it would be remainder 1. So there's a function. Of course, the mod function will give us the remainder. So let's take that little thing, the number, and divide it by our count. So that's just that formula counts how many words there are. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. Whoops, I'm just going to lock it. Absolute. All right, this function mod delivers the remainder. So close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Check that out. Now what do we have? All we need to do is add 1. It'll give us 3, 4, 5, 9, 1, 2. Totally awesome. So I'm going to plus 1. Three. And that tells us this little formula construction here will give us that same incrementing number pattern as the one we saw up here. Now what do we do? We simply put that inside of index. So index, you give it the array of values to extract. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it, comma, and then that row number, our formula incrementer. Daniel. All right, and so then we can Slide. type whatever we want here. And boom, there are there's our rotating list given a starting position. Absolutely awesome from straight to video 503. Now let's go look at 918. Now in 918, we did lookup. But here's what we did. We sorted the table descending from biggest to smallest. And when we looked up a value, we had to look through this for um, looking this value up, bump into the first smaller one, and then jump back a row. So 18 uh, pipe size for land square feet of 251. If we change this to 250, 250. we get 15 because we bump into the first smaller one and jump back around. Now, actually, the description in help and what, how we did this is we used index and match. But in the final argument, we used minus 1. That means we look for the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. right? So the question is, this works perfect here. But what if you cannot sort this column descending from biggest to smallest? Well. Ella Brie Belgium at YouTube came up with a great formula for just this case. Now, here's our table, sorted ascending. 
smallest to biggest. Let's look at index and the array. I'm looking up a pipe size, comma, and I'm going to use the match function to determine the row number again. I'm looking up this, comma, but now here's the array. That's the values I want to match, get the position to tell the index which pipe size to bring back, comma. Let's see what happens if we use the default one. We can leave it out. And this is exactly like VLOOKUP approximate match. It looks this up. It finds the first bigger number and jumps back. All right. Well, that's not what we want, right? If we have it sorted this way, we literally need to jump to the next one. So instead of just using match, I'm going to plus one, right? Because I really need, in this case, the 18, right? To simulate what we did up here with the minus one. But there is a slight problem. It works all the time, except for if you're exactly right 250. on 250 we actually want 15. 15 is what we need. So let's look at this. We did match. We did um, approximate match. Uh, first column bumped into the first big one and jumped back and then added one. Well, what do we want when the value 250 is actually in the first column? We actually want to add 0 here. All other times, adding 1 will work. So what is the trigger here to tell us when to add 0, otherwise add 1? Well, it's when 250 is in the list. And we can uh, get a 1 or count using the count if. Our range is going to be this, comma, and here's our criteria. Now the count if, when it finds, whatever we type here, when it finds the 250 in this list, it'll tell us it found 1. But really what we want when it finds 1 is 0. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, subtract 1. Now think about this. Right now, it's 1 minus 1 is 0. But what if the rest of the time, any value we put here that's not in this list, this is going to be 0. So that'll turn out to be minus zero. 1. Right? For right now, it's 0. That would work fine for our particular situation. What if it's 251? 251. Minus 1. We'll check this out. What do we do? We need to add 1 in all situations. So 251, the other side of 250 is 249. 249. Right? So it's minus 1 in all other situations. Well, I'm going to change this back to 250. 250. How about instead of plus 1, we do minus 1. And then when it's all other situations, it will be minus, minus 1. And that will work. So I'm going to copy. Remember, this gives us 0 or minus 1. So instead of plus 1, I'm going to do minus 1. Right? So now when it's 0, it'll be minus 0, which will give us exactly what we want. 250 approximate match bumps into the first bigger one, jumps back, gets the 15. All other times, it'll go to the next uh, row number, which is exactly perfect when we have to have the first column sorted from smallest to biggest. All right, control Enter. Looks like it's working there. 251 would better show us 18. 249, it better show us 15. So that is an amazing formula from Ella Breed Belgium, if I'm pronouncing that right, to do what we did with minus 1 as the third argument for match, but when the table can't be sorted from biggest to smallest, but must be sorted from smallest to biggest. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.